Okay, so hello everyone. So for today, we will be discussing chapter 15, chirality and the handedness of molecules. So, okay, so isomer, as we have discussed, I think we have already touched down to constitutional isomer, right? Uh, when we say um, constitutional isomer, these are um, molecules that have the same number of carbon atoms but different in connectivity. So, uh, as you've seen here, you know, isomers divided into two, which is constitutional isomer. We have, say, for example, a, a linear butanol. And then um, another example, we have a four carbon, but it's not a linear anymore. Or so we have um, branches and the middle carbon. So another example of an isomer is um, stereoisomer, which is uh, same connectivity, but different in 3D. Um, orientation. So, stereoisomer is also divided into two. We have those without um, stereocenter. Um, stereocenter, by the way, means a carbon that have four different molecules attached to it. If you can remember, carbon can take up to four connections or connectivity with other um, atoms, right? So, if that four if that four atoms connected to the carbon has different or, or is different from each other, then we can say that we already have one stereocenter carbon. So that is yung um meaning with uh with stereocenter, we can say that the molecule is chiral. No, and if without stereocenter, we can say that the molecule is a chiral. And um we can have an example such as cis and trans isomers on this one, okay. Cis and trans isomer is also important in your biochemistry. So may you may you might have discussion on this one, um, but not also but not that in depth, no. So we, we will focus more on chirality. Okay, and um chirality means handedness. And we will discuss further what does it mean, chir being chirality or having a chiral carbon or a chiral atom. No, chiral is divided into um enantiomeres and diastereomeres, which we will discuss later. Okay, so when we say enantiomeres, uh, this means super uh, posable mirror image. Okay, so take a look at the back of your hand. No, you may notice as you look at the back of your hand that your thumb is not on the same direction as the other. Correct. On your right hand, your thumb is facing your left, and in your left, your thumb is face or are pointing to your right. Correct. But when we um, clasp your hands together, you will notice that both your thumbs are connected to each other, right? So that's why chirality is sometimes known as the handedness of the molecules because it exhibits the same way or a mirror image of each other, okay? Meaning your both hands, left and right hands, are both mirror image of one another, okay? They understand that, but they are totally different molecule. As I'm saying, no matter how you rotate your right hand, it will never look like your left hand, especially when you're looking in an unclasped position. Okay, so um, enantiomeres are non-superposable mirror image. Okay, so meaning these are... Um, Okay, so uh, when we say non-superposable, uh, it's similar to non-superimposable. And if you can remember, non-super uh, superimposition, it's a manner of writing, uh, rewriting a certain or uh, placing one. Say, for example, in exam, you write letter A and you want to superimpose letter A with letter B. Then you write letter B at the top, no, at the top place of your letter A. And um, that's uh, that's an opposite of not non superposable or non superimposable. Okay, so as an example of this, uh, the molecule that exists as a pair of enantiomeres is considered to butanol. So as so you're going to check your carbon here, your carbon here has four different molecules attached with it, right? We have OH or your alcohol, we have your CH3, we have your hydrogen, and we have your uh, ethyl or your two carbon um, organic carbon atom. So if we are going to mirror that image, this um, this compound will will be shown. If we are going to be asked if this carbon is a stereocenter, the answer is yes. If there is one stereocenter, the next question is that is this chiral? The answer to that is, is yes. 
because any any atom with a stereocenter is considered as a chiral molecule. So it can exhibit another version of itself, which is the mirror image, making making it two molecule of different type, but with the same atom. Okay. So on this end, I think um, if we are going to rotate. Uh, even uh, if you rotate your hydrogen, your ethyl, it will never be the same one as your original molecule. It's the same as with your hands. No, no matter how you rotate your hand, it will never be the same with your left and right. No, um, they will never be the same. Uh, they will never be a copy of each other. Okay, but they are mirror image of each other. You understand that? So, um, enantiomer want to see uh the mirror image of two butanol is not superposable on the original is to rotate the mirror image. So that's what I'm saying. No matter how you rotate the mirror image, it can never be the same with the original molecule. Okay, so remember that the stereocenter should have four different molecules for it to be called non-superposable or non-superimposable or a chiral molecule. Okay, okay. Okay, now try to fit one molecule on top of, it, of the other so that all groups and bonds, bonds match exactly. So, um, the original and mirror image are non-superposable, meaning they are not the same, okay? Kumbaga sa kamay ninyo, if you clasp your hand, both, um, uh, say for example, you clasp your hand, but they're both, uh, your both, or your point of view is it's back, left and right, you can see your back of the hand, okay? If you put your left or right hand at the, at the top of the other, it's not the same, right? It's not superposable. Um, you understand that? Again, if you're if you're looking right now with on with your on your hand, you can see that uh, you can see the back of your hand on your perspective. If you put your right hand to your left hand, your thumb is not in the same place as your left hand. Your right thumb is not on the same place of as your right hand. So that is a non superposable mirror image they are mirror of each other if you clasp it together but if you su superimpose it you may see that the orientation is different okay so they are different molecules the same as with this one no you'll notice that this part this area if you superimpose that on this original um atom you'll notice that it is different because this one is facing you or um, on your perspective, you see this one. And on the original molecule, this um, hydrogen is at the back. Okay, so it's non-superposable, but a mirror image of each other. Okay, do you understand that? Okay, now, the objects that are non-superposable on their mirror image are called chiral. So, galing kasi sa, sa name nung sa hand niya, Greek name ng hand. So, that's why the other term for chiral is its handedness, or it is showing its handedness. Okay, the most important, the most common cause of enantiomerism in organic molecule is the presence of a carbon atom, in which that carbon atom should have four different molecules attached to it. No? Then we call that carbon atom a stereocenter. Okay? If an object and its mirror image are superposable, they are identical, and there is no possibility of enantiomerism. So we say that such an object is a chiral. So say, for example, this is 2-propanol, no? and we notice that there's why? We have hydroxide here, we have hydrogen, we have metal group CH3, and another metal group CH3. So we have two identical molecules. If you're going to mirror this original molecule, you'll notice that you can super superimpose, no? You can superimpose the original one to the mirror one if you just rotate the position of the um, molecule attached to the center or the central carbon. Thus, this does not exhibit a chiralism or it, this does not exhibit handedness such as those um, such as those with um, chiral molecule with stereocenter. So to see the relationship between the original and its mirror image, here are rotate here is a rotated mirror image by 120 degrees Celsius and it's still showing the same molecule due to the same uh, identical methyl um, atom attached to your carbon. So to summarize now a chiral they show handedness. They are non-superposable, but they are mirror image. Okay? Stereo center is a carbon with four groups, different groups bonded to it. A chiral is a superposable mirror image and usually is a result of a carbon that has no uh, of a non-stereocentered carbon. No? 
And we have your non-superposable mirror image. They are called enantiomeres. So they come always in pair, the enantiomeres, because they are always having a mirror image. So there's a formula for that that we will discuss later. Now we move on to the RS system. What is RS system? Because enantiomeres are different compounds, each must have a different name. So here are the enantiomeres of, of, of over-the-counter drug ibuprofen or yung pain reliever natin, okay? This one is an inactive form of enantiomere. Another thing that you, you have to understand is that um, both of the mirror image is not always available or one of the mirror image or one of the mirror molecule is always not that accessible or available or naturally occurring, okay? One is more active, one is less active. So on this part, we have an inactive enantiomere, the ibuprofen, and we have the active enantiomere the ibu uh, of ibuprofen. So we assign R and S system to know which one is which, no? which is the more active ibuprofen, which is the active ibuprofen. So Let's discuss how they are naming molecules based on RNS system. So the first step in assigning an RNS configuration to a stereocenter is to arrange the group on the stereocenter in order of priority. Now, the priority is based on the atomic number. Okay, so you may want to have your periodic table right now. The higher the atomic number, the higher the priority. So if you have a periodic table in your phones or in your gadgets, you may... You may do so. You may you may use it. Okay, so the first step in assigning... Oh, sorry. Uh, the higher the atomic number, the higher the priority. So, okay, so here are the prioritization depending on the um, atomic number. So, increasing priority. So, iodine has the most... Uh, because it has the higher atomic number. So, of course, you can check back to your... Um, you can check on your periodic table if there are other possible um, atoms that can be connected or bonded to carbon that is higher than iodine. But for now, let's utilize this um, table. Okay, so the question is, what if there's two more, um, there's two more of the same um, atom connected to your carbon. Say, for example, in this uh, on this example, this is a carboxyl carboxyl group, COOH, and we have um, one is double bonded oxygen and other the other one is single bonded. But know that um, carbon to oxygen, oxygen, this one, uh, double bond oxygen, and this is counted as two oxygen bonded to carbon. So that is oxygen, oxygen, and we have your single bonded oxygen. So if we're going to count that, no, the oxygen-oxygen bond with the double bond uh, indication is 8-8 eight, eight, and then um, the other one is also 8. So um, we'll choose the single bonded one, uh, which is 8. Okay, and on this part, um, okay, so I'm sorry about that for the confusion. Um, we're seeing this carbon as connected to another carbon. So there, there should be a letter C in here. No? There should be your central or stereo, stereo center carbon here on after this dash. No? So um, the first, the first um, atom connected to that carbon after this um, dash or your stereo center carbon is 6 because 6 is the atomic number of your carbon here. Okay, so if we're going to to check okay okay sorry again i think i'm 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 a bit confused sorry uh the first one is correct no? that um this carbon is your stereo center and if we're going to check if oxygen or this oxygen is prioritized uh we'll follow the single bonded oxygen as a prioritization more than the um, double bond okay and um, another another one is uh, so we'll follow here. This OH is the most prioritized um, bond bond to your carbon. The another one example is um, your carbon is connected to a double bond oxygen and a nitrogen. But know that um, this is not this this oxygen is considered as two oxygen connected to uh, two bonds no of your carbon. So. We have 8-8 eight, eight on that. Your carbon is 6 connected to your 8-8 eight, eight oxygen and your nitrogen, which is um, 7. So, 
um, the priority here is your nitrogen. Okay. Next are your your amine because we're not considering this oxygen as a priority group. So we'll follow the um, amine as a priority group. Okay. Next, another example is your carbon here is connected to a double bond oxygen again and a single bond hydrogen to it. So again, we're not considering yung oxygen double bond and we're going to utilize yung H, yung hydrogen as your priority group. On this part, if we're going to draw that, your carbon is connected to two uh, hydrogen atom and an oxygen. Okay, so between hydrogen, which is 1 and 1 only, atomic number 1 and 1, oxygen is 8. So we'll follow oxygen as a priority group attached to your carbon. If you can't imagine that, kindly please draw first this CH2OH, um, having your carbon in the center and having um, additional alkyl bonded to it, um, um, elicited by this dash, long dash, at the left side. Uh, and we have it um and we have a hydrogen two hydrogen group attached to it and we have another a single bond oxygen attached to your carbon so if you're going to notice between this alkyl group um elicited by this dash long dash between um uh, among among the three this alkyl group this hydrogen two hydrogen the oxygen part no the oxygen part is the most prioritized because it is not double bonded and between the atomic number, hydrogen is just one and oxygen is eight. Okay, so the next one is this part. No, We have carbon to nitrogen and um, this is the most priority group rather than your H because H is just one and nitrogen is five. Same with this one. C is the most prioritized group because C is six and hydrogen is one. Um um and then um for this one you can prioritize and if this um because it's it's all the same hydrogen uh atom okay okay so for this examples assign priorities to groups in each step so for uh this one if if this ethyl oh methyl oh and this ethyl oh is connected no is connected to a carbon which one should you prioritize? Okay, so if we're going to check, they both have CH2, right? So let's cross that out. They both have CH2, so cancel that. They have the same CH2. Now we'll focus on the next atom next to your CH2, which is your OH. Okay, and um, the immediate um, atom attached to your CH2 is oxygen. For here, the immediate atom attached to your CH2 is carbon. If we're going to check the atomic number of eight, that is of, of oxygen, sorry, that is eight, and your carbon is six. So between the two of them, we should prioritize this one, the first one, CH two O eight, O H. On the on letter B, let's check. We have both CH two. We both have CH two. The next one here is carbon, which have six atom, and we have your nitrogen, which has five atom. So the priority, the most prioritized group is your carbon so this one again okay for the next one we have ch2oh and ch2 ch2 cooh so for this one we'll look again on the immediate no so ch2 is the same as this one so we're not going to count that that because it's the same so we have oxygen and carbon so we'll follow oxygen because oxygen has eight carbon has six next one is this one ch2 and NH2. For this one, it's CH2 and um, a carbon group. No? So we'll follow again the carbon group, which is this one. Let's see if our answer is correct. Okay, so I think we got it right. Oh, sorry. I, I, I thought five ang nitrogen. Sorry, I do apologize for that confusion. Nitrogen has seven as its atomic number. Sorry. So that's why, um, uh, let's rationalize this. O has eight, carbon has six. So definitely oxygen will have the highest priority, higher priority than carbon. We have here, C has six and nitrogen has seven. So definitely nitrogen should be prioritized first. On our um, letter C, no, we have to cancel out CH2, CH2, just like the others. 
and we'll focus more on oxygen which have um, eight and carbon has six so we have to prioritize your oxygen next is this one now we have to prioritize nitrogen because nitrogen has seven and carbon has six okay so to assign an rns configuration assign first the highest priority just like what we did before and then um you have to choose the four lowest to each group funded to the stereo center okay now we have to orient the molecule in space so that the group of lowest priority is directed away from you and the three group of higher priority then project towards you okay so read the three groups projecting towards you in order from the highest to lowest and if reading the groups one two three is clockwise the configuration is r if it's counterclockwise the configuration is s so say for example this one okay this is the central carbon this is a stereoisomer you may notice that we have hydroxide hydrogen ethyl and methyl so this is two butanol okay if it's broken line if it's broken line it means it the hydrogen is at the back if it's um a solid uh triangle uh like line it means it's in front of you if it's a single line it means it's in the plane so just imagine a piece of paper and um this molecule is lying on that paper this h is at the at the bottom or at the back of the paper and then this solid one is hanging uh, or, or pointing towards you so uh, for this one let's see uh, which among the following is the most prioritized group so we can see that oxygen has eight hydrogen has one carbon has um carbon has six and this one also is a carbon so it means it also has six but after that we have ch3 so the next one for that is one okay and uh, on here the next one to your ch2 is also a six so if we're going to check the prioritization we'll have the eight first which is oxygen this is the most priority and then we have the ch2 ch3 which is six and then we have the ch3 and then lastly we have the hydrogen so if we're going to check on that let's see Tama, no? We are right. Number one is oxygen. Number two is this ethyl. Number three is this methyl. And number four is your hydrogen. So if you're going to check the rotation, no, it's O, CH2, and CH3. Then we have the four. So it is clockwise motion. If it's clockwise, we name it R2-butanol. Okay? Next, we have your alanine. Let's go back to our previous slide and rationalize. Okay? We have... um. We have this hydrogen, which has one atomic number. We have carbon, which have six. We have carbon, which is six again. And we have nitrogen, which is seven. So clearly, we should prioritize your nitrogen because it is the only seven atomic number in this bonded molecule. So which among the following methyl, methyl and carboxyl group should you prioritize? So of course, we'll follow this carboxyl group. Why? Because your carbon, the next atom to your carbon is hydrogen, which has one atomic number. The next atom for your carbon is oxygen, which has eight. So after nitrogen, we'll follow carboxyl and then your methyl. And lastly, again, your hydrogen that has one atomic number. If we're going to check from nitrogen to your carboxyl, to your methyl and to your H, it's also a clockwise motion. That means we should name this atom alanine R alanine. Okay? Okay. Now, returning to our original three dimensional drawings of the enantiomers of ibuprofen, we'll see that um, between the two of them, this is carbon, by the way, this number two. So um, we'll see. We have methyl, we have carboxyl, and we have your carbon connected to another carbon, right? So if we're, if we're going to check, since they they both have carbon on their first atom, we're going to check the next one. This one is carbon to hydrogen, which is 1. This is carbon to oxygen, which is 8. This is carbon to another carbon, which is 6. So we first come up with COOH that has 8. And then we have the 6, six carbon to carbon um, bond. And then um, we have CH3, which is just 1. And also, we have your hydrogen. So, the movement to here is also clockwise motion. This one is ibuprofen or R ibuprofen, the inactive form of your ibuprofen. The S ibuprofen is the more active one. If we're going to check, we'll see that this is a mirror image. This COOH is 
uh, you should um, prioritize this first. And then um, the six carbon, which is here. So the movement here is um, counter counterclockwise. No? Counterclockwise. So COOH, CC, and then your CH3, and then your hydrogen is the last one. So this is the S ibuprofen. Okay. Now, for a molecule with N stereocenter, the maximum number of possible stereoisomer has this formula to raise to N. So say, for example, how many carbon has four different groups attached to it? Or how many carbon, how many stereocenter do you have in the molecule? So again, stereocenter is a carbon with four different molecule bonded to it. That is your letter N. So your formula will be 2 raised to N. And if we have if we have just one stereocenter, then we have two raised to one. That will be equal to two. So you'll have two stereoisomer or two different molecule in three D dimensional um, orientation. Okay. If we have two, then that's two raised to two. If we have three stereocenter, that's two raised to three. It will be helpful to you, especially on your biochemistry, this part of stereoisomerism. Okay. So now we have the diastereomere. Diastereomere that are not mirror image, no, for examples, are diastereomers. Okay. Okay, we'll focus more on enantiomeres. So here are some of some of the examples of stereoisomer that you can practice at home. So if you are going to count, no, how many stereocenter does this molecule have? Um this one, this letter C, of course, we're going to check letter C only or your carbon only. So carbon here has two, the same molecules. So definitely this one is not a stereocenter. This carbon has a double bond. The double bond means you are connected to the same molecule twice. So that means it is not included in stereo uh, center. This carbon has four, di uh, four different molecules attached to it, right? Can we check that? Okay. We have carbon here, okay. We have, sorry, we have carbon, okay. We have this group, we have the OH group, we have the hydrogen group, and we have this group. So this carbon, this one, is a stereocenter. This one is not a stereocenter because it has the same hydrogen. This one is not a stereocenter. So letter A only have one stereo center. The formula is 2 raised to 1. So we have two molecule possible stereoisomer uh, for this letter A. Okay. For letter B, let's see. Uh, this carbon is connected to OH. There's an H right here below. And if we're going to have... Uh, my technique here is I'm, I'm dividing this... Um, polygon or this um, cyclic um, cyclic um, organic compound into two. So I'm drawing a line here, a straight line. And um, I'm going to compare this part to the other part, the opposite part. And as I've noticed on this end, we do not have um, an ethyl here, a methyl here on this end. So I, this part is different from this part. Okay, so that's different molecules attached to it. Do you understand that? So I'm using, I'm dividing them for me to better analyze or understand whether a certain carbon is a stereocenter. This carbon is connected to an OH, connected to the other half of this um, cyclic carbon compound, and connected to another half, okay? And it is also connected to a hydrogen here. So this one is a stereocenter, okay? This one is not a stereo center because they both have they both have a connection with two the same hydrogen group. Okay, if we're going to expand this cyclic compound, you can better analyze it. No, that um this one, this carbon right here in a linear um writing, have a connected hydrogen on both ends. This one also, this one also, and this one has two the same methyl group. So this part is not is not a stereo center also. So for letter B. My answer for this one is um, one also. So there is there are two possible stereoisomer here. Letter C. This carbon here at the end has two hydrogen attached to it. Actually, it's three, so it's not um, it's not uh, it's not stereocenter. This one has this methyl, this huge group, and an OH and another hydrogen attached to it. So this one is a stereocenter. This one is a stereocenter also. We have OH, we have this huge group, and we have NH2 and another hydrogen here. So we have two stereocenter. Another one is this one. 
uh, it's not a stereo center because it has double bond. Okay, so for letter C, this is 2 raised to 2, which is 4 um, possible stereo isomer. For letter D, we have um, every every carbon here is not a stereo center because it has a double bond on its cyclic form. No, this is a benzene. This one is not also because it has double bond. This one is a stereo center. No, no, this not a, this is not a stereo center because there's a hydrogen attached to this carbon. Two hydrogen. Okay, if we're going to expand this linear writing, um, this NH two is a stereo center because it has a huge group. It has a nitrogen, it has a hydrogen, and a carbon group. Okay, so for letter D, my answer here is one stereo center, two stereo isomer possible. Okay, letter E. Letter E, we have this carbon. It's a stereo center kasi anong sabi ko kanina? You have to divide this cyclic into both, both halves. And if we're going to compare this half to this, sorry, another half, they have different um, branches attached. So um, this one is a stereo center. This is not a stereo center because we have a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here. This one is a stereo center. No? We have this group, a hydrogen, and this half and yung another half, which is a stereo center. So for letter E, we have two stereo isomers and, uh, sorry, two stereo center and four stereo isomer possible. Okay. For letter F, we have carbon here is a stereo center. Carbon here is a stereo center as well. The rest is not. So if you're going to practice here more on counting the stereo center, you will you will you will study you will um you can make everything else parang uh, you can you can practice more and you will practice your skills and counting and everything will be easier to you. When you see a certain molecule, you'll know how many stereo center and how many stereo isomers are possible. Okay, so here is the solution. You can compare my answer to this. And you can recheck if your answer is also correct. Okay, so maybe in the exam, you may uh, encounter this part. No? I'm going to give you a huge molecule and I'm going to let you count how many stereo center are there in that certain molecule. So now we move on to our optical activity. What does this mean? Um, we have an ordinary light. Okay, this ordinary light is uh, light waves vibrating in all planes perpendicular to its direction. And we have the plane polarized light, which is a light waves vibrating only in parallel planes. So, um, using those plane polarized light, we have the polarimeter. This is an instrument for measuring the ability of the compound to rotate the plane of plane polarized light. So we also have your optical active compound, which, which, is, which is a compound showing or capable of rotating this plane polarized light using a polarimeter. So this is an example of your polarimeter. Okay. Um, we have the analyzing filter now rotated until the light again reaches the observer. So this can be rotated. So you'll know if it's um, clockwise or counterclockwise. It's like a telescope, no? And uh, the light should pass, or you should see something in this. Um, uh, you should see a light, no, passing through as you rotate. And every light that passes through from your light source to this end should pass through to this analyzing filter. Okay, then you'll notice if it's rotating or the molecule is rotating um, clockwise or counterclockwise, because that's another way to name it. Okay according to its optical activity. We have um, dextrorotatory or your D and your levorotatory, which is your L. So if it's clockwise rotation of the plane, it's uh, positive. You know? And if it's counterclockwise, if you rotate counterclockwise, this analyzing filter, and you've seen that, um, you've seen that the light passes through to every filter or every hole of this filter, You'll see that it is um, counterclockwise. You'll name it. You'll name a uh, compound liver rotatory. Okay. So by the way, this is the sample tube. Okay. And in that tube, uh, of course, it's a sample tube. So you'll see a sample in that tube. And through that sample, the light that passes through this tube, this whole tube, this polarimeter, will pass through the molecules. And you'll you'll see if that molecule. It's a dextrorotatory or levorotatory, depending on how you rotate this uh, filter, okay? Because um, if that means that the sample have the capability to rotate 
the light coming from the light source. So hence, it's a, it's a, it's about the activity or optical activity of a certain compound. You may name them um, dextrorotatory or liver rotatory. So sometimes you just write D or L. Okay, so chirality of biomolecules is also important because not everything is that not every biomolecules are active one. No? So except for inorganic salts and few low molecular organic substances, the molecules in living system, both plants and animals, are chiral, meaning they exist in two forms, which is an active and um, inactive. Not just in two forms, they can exist in a lot of forms depending on how many stereocenters are there. So although these molecules can exist as a number of stereoisomer, almost invariably only one stereoisomer is found in nature. This is what I'm saying. Insta instances do occur in which more than one stereoisomer is found, but this rarely exists together in some biological system. Okay, So this is how an enzyme is distinguished between molecules and enantiomers. So we have R, glyceraldehyde, and S, glyceraldehyde, which will be very important in your... Um, biochemistry. Say, for example, this is an enzyme example, which is a like chymotrypsin. This exists in our body, you know. They, they, are, they, use, they help us digest more of fats. The chymotrypsin, usually they're from pancreas, you know, the cells in the pancreas, the secreting cells. And um, it has a 251 stereocenter. Imagine that. 2 raised to 251, how many molecules of chymotrypsin are possible? No, But this is amazing because only one chymotrypsin is found in our, um, only one reoccurring um, chymotrypsin, which is the active one, is found in our body. So because interaction between molecules in living system takes place in a chiral environment, a molecule and its enantiomers or one of its diastereomers elicit a different physiological Respond. So that's that's the same with our example, ibuprofen. The S ibuprofen, the active one, is used for pain, fever, liver, and our enantiomers are inactive. So maybe if you if you intake those R enantiomers, you still feel the same pain that you are having. Okay. So this is an example also of a immunosuppressant FK506 that also have a lot of stereocenter. So it's just fascinating how a certain um, active compound most of all are present in our body instead of those millions of possible inactive compounds possible. Okay, so this is also an example of Tamiflu. Okay, that ends our chapter 15, chirality. So I hope you've learned something on this chapter. Um, uh, please do read this chapter in your book as well so you'll have an in-depth understanding of how chirality works. Thank you so much, guys, and I hope you've learned something in this discussion.